نعمد و نصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ريسبكتد ويورز توداي وي ويل توك اباوت برايد اند اروغانس ذس كاركترستكس از ذا بيسك كاركترستيك اوف شيطان اند بيكوز اوف ذس فيلينجز ا بيرسون هو از ا برايدفول بيرسون هي نيجلكتس تروث he refuses to obey allah tbarak wa taala eventually this feeling leads to a kuf, kuf and if we look at the verses of quran allah tbarak wa taala says in surah baqarah wa id qulna lil malaikati isjudu li adama fasajadu illa iblis aba wastakbara wa kana min al kafirin and when allah tbarak wa taala commanded to angels to prostrate to adam alayhi salam they did it but iblis refused and he was arrogant and he was one of non believers and if we look at the surah araf here allah tbarak wa taala describes and the arguments that happened with allah tbarak wa taala and shaitan allah asked shaitan qala ma mana'aka alla tasjuda what refrained you what restrained you not to prostrate to adam alayhi salam and shaitan answered qala ana khairum min khalaqtani min darin wa khalaqtahu min teen oh allah i am better than uh, adam alayhi salam because you created me from fire and you created adam from clay so look at that if we look at these verses of quran what the arrogant feeling and proudful feeling is shaitan thought that he was a superior because of this superior feelings he refused to obey the command of allah tbarak wa taala so from these verses we learn two lessons number one if a person has these feelings he refuses to obey allah tbarak wa taala he rejects truth and secondly eventually he goes to kufr like this verse said that he was one of the non muslims non believers because he refused to obey allah tbarak wa taala so respected viewers we have to be very watchful about these feelings because these feelings are very dangerous and eventually that leads towards kufr and kufr will take to a hell fire if we if we look at the other verses of quran Allah tbarak wa taala says ilahukum ilahun wahid your god is one god fal ladina la yu'minuna bil akhirati qulubuhum munkiratun wa hum mustakbirun but those people those who do not believe in hereafter their hearts are disapproving truth and they are arrogant they are arrogant people so arrogant people always they reject truth and what is the <clears throat> final destination of arrogant people hell is the final destination of arrogant people and another verse allah tbarak wa taala describes the final de- destination of those people those who have these feelings allah says in quran fadkhulu abwab jahannam khalidin fiha fala bi'sa maswal mutakabbirin so enter the gates of hell to live there for ever and how wretched is the residence of arrogance so the final destination is for the arrogant people a hell fire and if we look at the ahadith that clearly mentions that those who people having a tiny bit of kibr in their hearts they will not enter in jannah an abba abdullah bin abbas radiyallahu an عن النبي صلى الله عليه واله وسلم قال لا يدخل الجنه من كان في قلبه مثقال ذره من كبر حضرت عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه narrated رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم said the person has a tiny bit of kibr in his heart will not enter in jannah so it's a very dangerous thing very dangerous phenomena and inshallah will also explain it to you for some extent we have these feelings 
and how can we remove these feelings and other hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said to sahaba o oh, sahaba should i not tell you the companion of the companions of hellfire sahaba said that yes prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that companions of hellfire would be arrogants and tyrants and should i not tell you the companions of jannah companions of jannah would be weak and submissive people so allah tbarak wa taala this kibr is the garment of allah tbarak wa taala if anybody holds this garment to allah tbarak wa taala allah tbarak wa taala is highly displeased by this act and eventually that person gets a very severe punishment and if we look at uh, my brother and sister and we look at the categories of kibr there are three major types of kibr one is a person feels in his heart he is superior to others he is a special thing he is a special person he is a special entity and he look down at the people but these feelings he has attain his only is in heart and he does not express this feeling this is the first stage of kibr pride arrogance and in second stage he shows his arrogance by boosting off by talking about his wealth by talking about his wisdom by talking about the blessing of allah tbarak wa taala he allah has granted him but he does not say thanks to allah tbarak wa taala what he has it allah tbarak wa taala says in quran ma asabaka min hasanatin fa min allah wa ma asabaka min sayyiatin fa min nafsik what comes to you good is from your allah and what comes to you bad is from yourself what does it means it means that if you have a good business if you have a, a big house if you have a beautiful wife if you have other blessings these are from allah it is not your wisdom it is not from your education it is not from from your abilities it is just from allah tbarak wa taala's blessing and barakas and what happened wrong if you have any problems in your life if you if you have a failure in your life this is because of your inabilities because of your sins wa ma asabaka min musibatin fa bima kasabat aydikum wa ya'fu an kaseer what you earn bad in the dunya but you have resulted bad things problems in your life it is a result of your deeds what you are doing it though allah tbarak wa taala forgive many bad deeds many sins so if we look at ourselves we are thinking other way around for example if we have any good business if we have any good plan we always say that we we don't say that it is from the baraka of allah tbarak wa taala what we say it is my brain child it is my wisdom it is my opinion i am i am always when we say i am my words are the last words i am have the full authority that shows kibr that shows that this person has those feelings that he has something he has a uh, extra uh, he has those power those people has not and if anything bad happen in our life what we going to say usually what we say we say look at that i'm doing everything good i don't know how allah tbarak wa taala allah tbarak wa taala curse me why allah tbarak wa taala curse me i'm doing my prayers i'm giving charities and i do every, everything i don't know why my business is not running we do not look at our shortcomings we do not look at our bad deeds what is the result for this war why my shop is not running why maybe this is the shortcomings in myself in my side but shaitan always do make or in make our our in uh, diversion towards other things and the third stage of kibr is a person physically what he has in his heart feelings of arrogance and pride this prideful person 
shows this feeling physically while he is moving, while he is talking, while he is walking. He has arrogant style. And Allah Taala highly dislikes this style. Allah says in Quran, وَلَا تُسَعِرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تُسَعِرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ Turn not your face away from people with arrogance. وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Do not walk through earth exultantly, arrogantly. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا مُخْتَلٍ فَخُورٍ Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala does not like arrogant booster. Here Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala condemns those people, those who walk arrogantly, those who say that we, we are very special people, we need a special protocol, we are a VIPs. So Allah condemns those people. In other words, Allah shows his grandeur and Allah tells that how how much minute you are in the eyes of Allah and what is your entity you cannot do anything and Allah says that wala tamshi fil ard maraha innaka lan takhriq al ard wa lan tablugh al jibal tula do not walk on the face of earth arrogantly you can you will never never tear this earth apart you have no ability you are not so much strong to tear this earth apart and you will never ever reach the heights of the mountain so why are you walking in this way why are you showing your pride what you have yourself so dear respected viewers I'm I um, humbly requested you, you gauge yourself, think about yourself. Maybe we are victim of this sort of feelings for some extent and we should remove these feelings out of our heart. We should show submissiveness, humbleness. Allah wa ta'ala loves those people who are humble, who are submissive people. Look at that when Prophet Muhammad wasallam entered in Mecca. He entered as a conqueror and he did not show his might, did not show his pride. He was sitting on a camel and with submissiveness his head was touching on the hump of a camel. He was bowing his head. He was having a feeling to thanks to Allah wa ta'ala. So, Whenever we have success in our life, whenever Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala bless us with the bounties and barakas, if we get any good job, it is not our knowledge. Many people, those are more wise, more educated than us, they are unemployed. But if Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has given us this chance, this is the baraka and blessings of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Allah showers upon us. So what we should not, what we should go do? We should say thanks to Allah Tabarak wa Taala. Say Alhamdulillah, but not say with, on the on the with the tongue. Practically, to do the to do the to perform salah and say thanks. O oh Allah, you have granted this. You have granted your mercy upon me. I am not worthy all of these bounties and blessings and pleasures you have given to me this is your grace this is your might you are providing me and if by chance we have any hard times in our life because life there is an ups and downs in the life every person has to face ups and downs in a life so whenever we have a hard time in our life we do sabr show patience and look at our own fault and do astaghfar seek repentance ask Allah wa ta'ala O oh Allah forgive me O oh Allah forgive me this is a result of my bad deeds 
this is a result of I'm away from you. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, oh Allah, make me close to you. So this sort of feelings we have it. When we have this sort of feelings, we will, alhamdulillah, then we have this sort of a society when we have a no jealousy, when we have a no fight, when we have, because mostly, mostly problems, where the problem lies? Ego. The people have a strong ego. Why I'm not agreed to do marriage to my daughter there? Because my ego. Where ego? What is the phenomena behind ego? Pride. I will not allow you to go outside my marriage of the, from my family, from my clan, from my, so everything my, so this becomes an ego. And when we become egoistic people, we make the things difficult. We do not care about the commands of Allah wa ta'ala. Yesterday a person met to me. He said that his sister would like to marry a person. But that person is a very good Muslim. But he does not belong to his country. He belongs to another country. And he said that his parents are not willing to do that. And his sister and he requested them again and again. Why not? They said, no, no. Because we, and if we have this sort of feelings, we do not understand the teaching of Islam. Islam is above from all race, color. Ya ayuhan nasu inna khalaqnaakum min zakarim wa unsa wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qabaila lita'arafu inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. O people, we made you, we created you from one man and one woman. And then divided you in clans, tribes. For what? For your recognition. You are not superior to each other. The superior, the close person in the eyes of Allah, who is a most pious person, who is not a rich person, who is not a beautiful person, who is not a strong person, who is a person who is a pious person, who has a fear of Allah in his heart. So this is the teaching of Islam. And other, a person asked me that sometimes if I'm using, you know, big car and having a, having a big house, so it shows arrogance. So that recalls one of hadith. When a person came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he said that, O oh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we are using good clothes and shoes to beautify ourselves, so is it this arrogance? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, Allahu Jamilun Yuhibbul Jamal. Allah Tabarak Wa Ta'ala is beautiful and Allah likes beauty. To use big houses, to use good, you know, all the, to have the benefits of the blessings of Allah Tabarak Wa Ta'ala, use good dresses, use all other luxuries, is not, is not uh, having the phenomena of prideness. Prideness is your feelings. Maybe you have nothing. Maybe you have nothing. No worldly thing. But you feel that you are the most, you know, uh, wise person on the face of earth. This is a pride feeling. This is a proud, you have it. You have nothing. But you think that your race is the best race of the earth. You, you are nothing. You have no money. But you feel that your blood is a special blood. You will not do marriages with the other families, other tribes, because you have a special blood. So these feelings are the, the feelings of the pride and arrogance feelings. And in one of the hadiths, Prophet ﷺ said that pride is the garment of Allah. If anybody holds this garment, if anybody, because kibr, Proud is only, this attribute is only for Allah. If any creature, if any creature has these feelings, Allah highly dislikes. And as I mentioned, as I mentioned, 
many verses and ahadith before that those clearly mention that if a person has a bit little bit feeling in his heart he will not enter in a jannah and what about we are the slave of these feelings we are living in this we are living in this civilized society but our thoughts are those who live in the yam jahiliya and sometimes i feel very sad because when i interact with the people and they have lots of problems and those problems are self created self created problems and just based on ego mostly those problems are the those are destroying the whole family units divorce issues marriage issues or even go for education issues all link with this arrogant feeling i will not send my child to this ha uh, this education and this madrasa this one even maaz allah maaz allah what we have now feelings we we come back to the ayyam al jahiliya even we worship places we make a proud feeling in our worship places what about those people who involve themselves in a worldly affairs in dunya i'm talking about those people who are pious people those pious people having this feelings of kibr so much they look down others oh he is not performing salah we make our masajid a certain sect for certain school of thought for certain people for certain brotherhood for certain language why because we have this feeling of arrogant we have a pride of our our tribe we have pride of our language we pride pride of our sect and we look down other people and it is a very bad thing i'm telling you and wasted all our efforts if a person is a is a is doing prayers day and night but he has this feeling of arrogance he look down the other person look at that he is not performing salah look at that he is not doing if allah tbarak wa taala has given us this opportunity if allah tbarak if allah tbarak wa taala has given us uh, this ability we say thanks to allah and do not condemn other people think about it maybe the time of death this person recites kalma and go to a janna and i will not even with we should not look down non muslims maybe non muslim last breath he entered in the fold of islam and maybe shaitan maaz allah maaz allah i become a trap prey of shaitan and come out of a iman nobody knows nobody knows and this is a very dangerous thing those people those who are the pious people what happen when we when we are on the right path shaitan tries to waste our all our efforts if a person start doing his salah he is doing charity what he going to do now he put this feeling there okay so because of this feeling all his efforts all his struggle wasted so allah tbarak wa taala give us understanding and wisdom and allah tbarak wa taala make us aware about this bad feelings and make us enable to away from these sort of feelings inside we have it wa ma alaina illa al balagh